So we're here to solve this skyscrapers puzzle by Jen Huan. It has a pretty interesting theme and maybe an unusual theme for a Tuesday, but let's actually start with probably what most people thought through there. I think two observations you can make at the start. The first is with these threes, which will always have a small value in front of them. Um, the first potential observation people make is that four and five have to be in the top of these two cells in that first column. And this would be a note I typically write in a grid. Another thing people may note is that the fives have to be at least three cells away from the three, so the three buildings can be seen. And that may also give you that a five is in one of those cells. And this may be uh, the first place people pause and sort of wonder what can they do next. And there's not a terrible amount, at least looking from the left, but there is a whole lot if we look from the top. And Right now, I actually want to consider not any specific order of these uh, three columns, but I just want to kind of randomize. So let's just say um, something like this is true. And any of these can shift. So recognize what I'm about to talk through is true if the fives go here, and it's true if the fives go here. But what I want to start with is let's start with uh, whichever column has the five at the bottom. Recognize that one of the first things it will have to do is have this largest value uh, after the five, so a four being the next uh, largest, being that closest building. If a four is anywhere else in this column, we're going to see more than two buildings in this column. And uh, so we know for sure four is at the top and five is at the bottom of one of these first three columns where a two clue is given. There's also going to be another column where a five is the clue and another column where one more up is a five is a clue. And so for this five, notice that a four can't go um, in the second or third rows because, again, it would be seen by the clue above. The four must be hidden, and the next largest building below a four has to be the first one seen in that space. And the same logic will actually show you that in the last of these three columns, the four is hidden, the three are, is hidden, and the two and the one are the buildings that are given there. And if we actually, again, just not knowing which column is which, I'm just trying to show you conceptually that there are these specific series, what we can do in this thought mapping space is actually see that there are limited digits for each of these, these uh, rows. For instance, in the bottom, we know for sure 3, 4, and 5 are going to appear in this space. And in this spot, 1, 4, and 5 will appear. And in this row, it's going to be 1, 2, and 5. And in this space, it's 1, 2, and 3. And in the top row, it's 2, 3, and 4. And one deduction that solvers may have run into sooner is actually once they recognize a four is in front of one of these cells, you'll get that on the left side, the four must be in this row and the five up above. And that gets you this five. And if you also have the rest of these triples marked, this is another meaning of triplet, I guess. In the same way these outside clues are triplets, these triplets are key in the solve everywhere through the grid. We'll see that a one is here. And we now have a row that's missing three and four, or we've got a row that's missing two and three, and we've got a row that's missing one and two. So we get the left columns quickly. And now to finish the puzzle and to order these different columns, we have to look now back at the horizontal clues that start us out. If this three at the bottom sees three buildings, one and two can be first, but we've got to finish seeing buildings from there. Three and four must be hidden. Um, that now means that the four is at the top of this uh, column. And again, if we work up the stack, this whole uh, shoot is going to be five followed by four, three, two, one. This three in the fourth row sees two and three. And if a four were in the cell, it would be too large. We'd have four total building scenes. So the five must come before the four. So the four is hidden. Um, if that's true, then this five has placed uh, this column with the four below it, the three up top, and again, two and one coming down. And with this four here, this is the column that had the five in the middle, four and three below it, and two and one coming down. So a uh, set of cascading deductions, but hopefully got you to think first about how these row clues limited where the fives go. Because of how the fives went, each of these columns is actually very constrained. You'll see every vertical column here is the same cycling of digits five, four, three, two, one coming down, and then wrapping back around as it scrolls. And so Often in these puzzles that have almost all the clues specified, you, you'll get constrained situations like this one. So I hope you learn a little bit about how to visualize these puzzles differently, even how to track notes where we didn't know anything for sure, but we we're really just thinking across these columns, what will values look like? These are key deductions to make sometimes with skyscrapers puzzles. So I hope you can take them to the next challenges you face, and we'll see you again soon.